Welcome back, Zero K fans. This is Shadow Fury Three 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 bringing you another series from the well tournament going on right now for Zero K, January Eleventh, Twenty Fourteen. We have right now Cube versus the Sponge, and that is one of the round of sixteen matches. We've seen Sackoth and Lori, and Lori Lori did win two to one, and God versus Magman, which was well, as you can expect. So the Sponge vs. Cube, whoever wins will be fighting Lori. And of course, all these other matches have happened in parallel. I did not see those because they were happening at the same time as I was casting the ones I was already casting. I'm just waiting on Cube and the Sponge to get their game started. And once that happens, we will begin that one. So. Anyway, the Cube is one of the better players in the game. We haven't seen him in a while, though. And the Sponge. We've seen a lot recently. He's been a lot of my casts, and is also fairly effective. As I recall, he's... I don't think what his general style is. I don't remember offhand exactly. We'll find out definitely quite soon. Anyway, the game is beginning, so we shall join it. Cube in the southwest corner of the map is... Hasn't started yet. The sponge going very quickly for metal extractor, not going for a quick factory plop. A little surprising there. Anyway, Cube going for cloakies very quickly, and then getting... His standard economy. See if the sponge... Actually, the sponge going for a further up Cloaky Bot Factory. I'm a bit surprised he didn't build one sooner. Probably trying to get it a bit closer, but... Yeah, he went for Metal Extractor first, which is interesting. Anyway, not building anything out of it yet. Cube is, however, building up a... Rector first, probably for Reclaim. And then going for Glaives afterwards. Looks like... Actually, what is he planning on doing with this? No, he's going for just a very quick, very, very, very quick expansion to the southeast side of the map. Possibly to try to throw the sponge off, because the start positions on this map, both players get the entire top strip and the entire bottom strip. Or should they, player, the blue player gets the top strip, the red player gets the bottom strip, and Cube. Cube has, I don't know if that's Cube drawing it one of the spectators, but yeah. That's actually really well done. I mean, crap, I'm impressed. So yes, we have Cube here, and the sponge... Actually, Sponge sending in some glaives, and he is actually going to be dealing, I think, a fair amount of damage with that. I mean, the glaives are going to be fighting against Cube's glaives. He can't actually deal a whole lot of damage right now. If he go attacks this southeast side, it's going to be a lot of damage. Cube sending one glaive up to scout out, and the glaives coming in for the Sponge about to hit Cube's base, and Cube's. Oh, anyway. Cube is going to be able to get rid of these, no problem. The Sponge, trying to, actually doing a pretty good job micromanaging those glaives to retreat out of there, but at the same time, Cube is attacking in the north and will be dealing a lot of damage. And there's really not a whole lot of defending there. I mean, sorry, he's not going to do a whole lot of damage. It's a matter of positioning. If he's able to get around these solar plants so that the laser turret can't hit him, he can deal a lot of damage, but it's going to come down to very, very, very tricky micro. And with that, it's basically, well, it's basically just a bit of a war of attrition right now. I mean, Cube hasn't actually attacked yet. He's not, I doubt he's planning to. He's not going to actually ultimately deal all that much damage if he does. The Sponge and Cube just sort of dancing around by Cube's defenses while the Sponge tries to expand out forward. And right now, the Sponge actually does have a slight economic advantage. So it's working out well for him. But Cube has... A much bigger military. He has made a lot of contracts. But, admittedly, he's not actually given them a whole lot this time around. I mean, normally it's supposed to be like near immortality and ability to generate any sort of weapon you want, but no, it looks like these glaives are pretty much just completely shat out. He doesn't really care for them very much. Decided so to just rip them off completely, which is kind of unlike him, but, well. On the other hand, they are robots, so who really cares? However, Cube is actually losing a lot of these glaives. The Sponge doing a pretty good job dealing with what he had, and it was a fairly even fight for the most part. But at this point, the Sponge able to take... No, it's a very even fight. Both players finishing off with one glaive each, and the last glaive for the Sponge getting killed by a defender, and Cube is going in there, and I realized that that contract joke was really... the probably the bad time to make that joke. But seriously, there's not going to be any better time. This game really doesn't 
fit in well, unfortunately, for that sort of reference. Alright, whatever. That didn't really work out. But what is working out is the Sponge's attacks, actually. They are doing a pretty good job, though Cubay is getting a lot of reclaim from these Glaives. He's getting a fair amount of reclaim income. He's able to rebuild a lot of his own Glaives. And the Sponge, on the other hand, switching to Shield Bots. He does have some ticks coming up. He has one with his Glaives coming in here. These Glaives are going to have no problem dealing with what Cubay has. And Cubay going for a Disruption Beam, or sorry, Particle Beam instead. This tick, if it gets close enough, it actually will be able to take care of Cubay's commander. We'll see if that works out, though, and it looks like... No, that is not going to happen. So... Cubay's commander is... still pretty safe. However, it is going... Okay, at this point, it's going to be very hard for that tick to get in and deal a whole lot of damage. There was a bit of a timing window when it was attacking the Glades, but it was extremely tight, and I'm not surprised that the Sponge didn't take it. In fact, I wouldn't have taken it. I don't see why anyone would have taken it. It just would have been very, very, very tricky to pull off. But at this point, Cubay is about even for economy with the Sponge, and there's a lot of drawing going on. I'll get to that when it's done, but anyway... The Sponge is hitting... Sorry, the Sponge's landmine goes off. Cubay is losing about half of his Glaives to that, and the other half is going to be lost to the Glaives themselves. But it looks like Cubay's commander doing a good job supporting, but still, even then, the Glaives are going down. Unless you can say that Cubay made the contract with his commander. That actually could make sense. So we'll go with that one. Though the commander still isn't... I mean, actually, now so far it's been immortal so far. Yep, it's done pretty good. So, yeah, we'll go with that. And it generates weapons pretty much on the fly, so yeah, that, that works. That's okay. I am really stretching that way too far. But anyway, the shield bot has been completed. A felon is coming up for the sponge, along with some thugs, and this is not a bad idea. It's fairly difficult for cloaky bots in my experience to deal with felons. Sharpshooters apparently do pretty well, but those have not been built yet, and a store... Okay, energy storage for Cubay. Not sure why that's the case, but... Well, just a general storage. Metal and energy storage. Double his metal and energy capacity. Not sure why exactly he's doing that, but... That is exactly what he's doing. There's more than enough capacity at this point, and he is pushing forward into the tick landmines. Unfortunately, the tick landmines are right next to each other. That is not going to be... A, well, it might be effective if the commander gets close enough. It will deal enough damage with the two ticks. There we go, stunning out the commander. These glaives need to come in right now, and they are. And this commander, however, not heavily stunned. That explains why he went for two ticks. But even with two ticks, it wasn't quite enough. So, Cubay is not going to be too... Th his commander's not going to be too threatened by this. And... Same time, the sponge... He is getting his shield bot stuff set up, getting more thugs, really focusing on that. Only getting enough cloaky bots to basically keep the sponge at bay, or sorry, keep Cubay at bay for long enough to get the shield bot strategy properly up and going. Unfortunately, that's not working out too well, and the sponge deciding to move out with what he has. He actually does have an economic advantage, mind you. Cubay has been building up a bit in the back, but nowhere near as much. He's been focusing heavily on just pushing out a lot of cloaky bots. And at this point, the sponge is prepped. He does have his felon up, he does have his thugs up as well, and he has revealed his plan, while at the same time Cubay is coming in with what's about to be a level 3 commander. Unfortunately, that felon draining a lot of his energy just to get rid of the commander shields and some of its health. Another thug coming in to help out, but the thing is, of course, when the felon loses energy, it loses shields, which means it loses defenses, but Glaive's coming in as support. However, even then, it's not a whole lot of shields available. And Asp is coming in to try to help recharge these shields as well, because I think his shield recharge is shared. That doesn't help, though. Cubay's commander able to deal with this, adding a disruptor beam and some beam upgrades as well to his commander. That is very powerful. I mean, a support commander being used as a battle commander is pretty scary. And it looks like Cubay is going to be able to take out the sponge this game. But we'll see. This Aspis has been built. It isn't there to help out anything other than the thugs, but that's still helpful. However, the Aspis is going to take a while to charge up, and Cubay is very much in range to deal with this. Able to deal from damage to the shield. The thing is, the Aspis shield is so large, it's easy to crawl under it. 
and not a bad dodge draw trying to use the tick under the shield, but even then, not quite as effective as it could be. Kyubei coming in from the north, and Kyubei continuing to mostly pour in from the center. His forces coming in from the center, and his commander continuing to morph up. Racketeer coming in with disarm missiles, able to slow down this stuff a bit, able to stop damage from being dealt, but even with that, it's only going to be useful for the ticks to get in and actually stop everything so the glaives can come in and deal with it. No felons appear forthcoming. More thugs do appear forthcoming. Sorry, there's a felon forthcoming after this thug. If this thug is able to be finished, then a felon will come after that. The glaives are all going down in the process. So the racks are doing what it can to try to disarm that commander. But that commander is extremely threatening right now and is about to be fully disarmed. But even then, disarmed for seven seconds. That... That's a sh that is a short window, but that's pretty much all that the sponge has. That Racketeer is dead. And that is not enough of a window. Apparently, Kyubei able to get around that, so no big deal there. And I think this is game. Kyubei pushing in and finishing up, getting rid of the sponge. And that is... Unfortunately, that felon not up in time. Very unfortunate. That felon would have been more useful about a minute ago. But now that all the shields, I mean, even then, all the shields were down. It wouldn't even really matter that much. So unfortunately, Q-Bay's battle commander is able to come in and just tear apart everything. At the same time, the sponge is commander of the northwest side of the map, but I think the sponge is going to be throwing in the towel pretty much now. In fact, he's starting to lag out. Too. Oh, wow. I think the sponge might have disconnected, in fact. That's a little bit concerning. Yeah, I think that the sponge is actually going to disconnect from this. Oh, he has disconnected. What am I saying? He's already disconnected. So at this point, yeah, Kyubei has won this game. I'm a little bit surprised that it hasn't quite registered. But it's a disconnect. It wasn't the leave. Kyubei didn't... Or, the sponge didn't exit the game. He's simply disconnected. But yeah, that is still game. Kyubei still has won this. Disconnect or not. The sponge didn't have much of a chance. So that is game one. Kyubei beating the sponge pretty handily. And... That will then Unit under be... Well, on to game two pretty quickly. Seriously though, is that a macro that someone had for the Kyubei drawing or was that just hand drawing? Because that was really well done. I'm very impressed. Probably was just a macro though. Might be a widget to turn a JPEG into a drawing like that, or just a, any image into a drawing like that, PNG into a drawing like that. Still, that is game, so QBA beats the sponge in game one. And we will have game two very shortly, so stay tuned for that. Welcome back, Zero K fans, to game two of QBA versus the Sponge. This is Shadow Fury 33. And we are on Red Comet this time around. So, Cubay versus the Sponge. This is one of the first matches. I mean, one of the round of 16 matches for today. And whoever wins that will be fighting against Lori, which we saw against Sackdot do quite well. So, this is going to be rather tricky for them, but let's get the game started. And then from there, it will be a interesting game. Red Comet is a very flat map. We saw it earlier, actually. And in that game, it was, well, a bit one-sided. I mean, it was God versus Magman. Magman going for hovercrafts, God for going for tanks. Now, Cubay is going for hovercrafts, and the Sponge is going for light vehicles. A bit more typical this time around. Admittedly, tanks are not a bad choice in this map. This is a very flat map, so being that it's flat, it is typically a good idea to go for heavy tanks. Well, go for heavy tanks or vehicles or hovercrafts. Hovercrafts do have the advantage of very high alpha on the scrubbers. You get three or four scrubbers or... Six in Cubase case, and you end up able to deal a lot of damage. Not sure what that finger is doing there. Anyway, the Sponge did pick this map having lost the previous game as the rules of this tournament. Whoever loses picks the map, and that is important because, well, the Sponge apparently likes this map a lot more than Cubay does. However, Cubay is getting a lot of scrubbers, and that's going to be pretty scary. The Scorchers can do okay against them, but they have such high alpha that coming in one at a time, the Scorchers are just going to be killed, just one-shotted by all of these scrubbers. That is going to be pretty painful. Now, Cubay, he 
is expanding pretty well as well on top of this. He doesn't have as much... Well, he doesn't have as quick of a second builder coming up, but... The Sponge, his second builder, while it is coming in fairly quickly, he's still not really prepped to deal with these Scrubbers. And the Scrubbers are coming in! The Sponge's Scorchers are rather spread out, and Cubay will find them. It looks like Cubay's Scrubbers may get a bit spread out, but it looks like they're not going to be too bad off. Yep, they're moving straight in, while the Sponge, his forces are right out of position. And there goes one Scorcher for... Not free, actually. Not quite able to do that. Apparently, five Scrubbers is not nearly enough to one-shot a Scorcher. But if they get away and don't get hit too much, that is going to be just fine. So Cubay doing a nice job microing around these Scrubbers. Getting rid of one of the Scorchers, but losing a Scrubber as well. So at this point, it's been pretty much one Scrubber per Scorcher. So if it keeps this up, I think the Sponge might actually get a bit ahead on this one. Admittedly, they are about the same cost. No, sorry, Scrubbers are much cheaper. My mistake, Cubay is actually getting ahead. Very much so. In fact, he has won this battle. He has far more Scrubbers, and the Scrubbers are beating the Scorchers cost-effectively. Cubay doesn't seem to be going for harassment at this point. He's going just continuing to build up. His main economy in his base is a bit paranoid, getting Solar Collectors instead of Wind Generators and getting... Lotus is around pretty much everywhere. Not unusual, especially in this map. There's actually a lot of room for raiding on this map. Get in from the north, get in from the south. It's really easy to get your stuff raided without you being able to stop it. And Scrubbers coming into flank against the Scorchers. Unfortunately, they weren't in a great position to deal with that. And thankfully for them, Cubase Commander is in position to deal with this. And once again, another Scorcher goes down. Right next to Cubase Commander as well, so that's a lot of reclaim. That's going to be enough reclaim for about three or four more scrubbers just on its own. Cubay really is taking this game very quickly. And he won game one, so this is going to be... If he wins this, it's going to be it for the sponge. And we'll see Cubay versus Lori. But if not, then it's going to be rather tricky. But unfortunately for the Sponge, he is losing a lot of Scorchers in this. And the Scrubbers are not dying in the process. He really needs to take out about two Scrubbers per Scorcher to be cost-effective. I'm a bit surprised he hasn't switched over to Slashers or... Maybe not Levelers, but Slashers, yeah, would be interesting. I mean, that might not work especially well since the Scrubbers, as soon as they get in, Slashers have died. They're just going to die to the Scrubbers. But actually, this Scorcher is not doing a bad job. That was a bit of a hero Scorcher. Didn't ultimately deal a huge amount of damage, ultimately died, but able to take out three Scrubbers in the process. As long as the Sponge can keep doing that, like three to one trade like that, he is going to get up ahead in this game. At this point, however, that is not happening, and the Sponge is not doing much with what he has. I mean, there's a lot of defenseless area. There's this expansion here. There's a heavy tank factory can build up to the north by the Sponge. He has 25 metal right now, too, which is an interesting time for that to happen, but he is... Not got a lot actually building up there. He doesn't have a caretaker next to it or anything like that to, to push the build power. So that factory is going to take a couple minutes to build up. It's about a minute and a half left on that factory. At the same time, Cubay coming in with half a dozen scrubbers along the center of the map looking to harass. And the Scorchers are going to be in position to deal with this. But even then, it's going to be hard. And apparently Cubay is wasting a lot of metal, which is very un cubay like to be wasteful like that at all. Cubay, you're supposed to be about efficiency and not wasting anything. But no, apparently he is being a little bit mismanagement, or being mismanaging his resources a little bit. However, able to still take care of a lot of what the sponge had built up, getting rid of a lot of his scorches. But at this point, the sponge is putting his units into much better positions to deal with the scrubbers. Caretaker being built up for the Cubay, however, and that will mean Cubay will basically double his scrubber count. That is probably going to turn this game right around. That being said, the Heavy Tank Factory is about 40 seconds away from being done. The Scorchers doing what they can, and the Scrubbers are going to basically actually die. Yeah, these, the Scrubbers are starting to not really work out right now. I'd be a little surprised if he doesn't go for Scalpels or possibly Maces fairly soon. And the thing is, Scrubbers, you have to be really careful, and they have to have them in groups of five or six or so in order to one-shot anything. One at a time is not going to work. Now, of course, Cubay has been expanding at the same time, as has the Sponge. Both players have been expanding 
pretty well and making sure to keep their opponents basically distracted while the expansions are ongoing. But the fact is the Sponge could easily harass if he went around the side. He'd get rid of a lot of Cubase metal. And at this point, that metal is being used to build up Caretakers to essentially triple the number of units that Cubay will have on the field. Triple his unit production rate. However, the Sponge has started to clump up his units quite nicely, getting some of his Scorchers into position and doing a pretty good job kiting around. And also, now he's found out the expansion. Now he's found out about the Worker. If he's going to go for that expansion, I'm not sure, but he may very well do so. However, the Scorchers are taking a lot of damage. I think the Scorchers deal the most damage when they're near their targets. The far away from the target, the Scrub is going to have the advantage, but at this point, Cubay has revealed his expansion attempts, and the Sponge is going to start destroying those. Probably going to get rid of the Scrubber, and then... No! What? The Sponge is not going along? Why? Why is the Scrubber... Why is this set of Scorchers not going along at the east side of the map to get rid of this Metal Extractor set? The Sponge really must not be aware of this. He's not got radar coverage on that, that's for sure. He does have a Banisher coming up from the north in the Tank Factory. 15 metal being poured into that, while well, at the same time he has the rest of his metal being poured into his Light Beagle Factory, building up Scrubber, sorry, building up Scorchers, and finding a bit more going on, also finding a bunch of Halberds, which won't last especially long. In fact, these Scorchers are doing a decent job. However, they, the biggest thing is that they have to be near their targets, and that's not helping when it comes... The Mace here is actually dealing quite a bit of damage to them, along with the Laser Tower. There's a lot of firepower coming on them. They cannot last long. Like I said, they can get near their targets, but they can't easily kite away from anything. And at the same time, they also die quickly. They are, they are radar units. They are quite weak. 400 health is not very much. While at the same time, they are being used fairly effectively for harassment, and Cubay, once again, going for a lot of storage. I'm not sure why. At this point, probably because he was wasting a lot of metal, but I'm not sure why he wasn't just building more production structure. That's typically what you do. But anyway, Cubay did lose those storages. He is now wasting a lot of energy and metal. That was huge for the Sponge, getting rid of a lot of stuff in storage. However, Cubay did lose a Caretaker. I forgot to point that out. He lost a Caretaker there, and that is huge. That means he now has a ton of metal waste, although admittedly, at this point, losing quite a few metal extractors, the Sponge, that harassment was very effective and also covered for the Banisher and Reaper from the north. And it looks like once that's done, I'm not sure how many he's going to do. Cubay, however... Not aware of what's going on to the north, but he is just checking. He wants to know what's going on, and he's going to find out there is a banisher there, a heavy tank factory there. Been there for the last five minutes or so. Maybe less. Maybe three minutes. And the banisher... Not able to do much damage. Halberds are very protected when they are clump where they are not attacking. They are attacking, they are not very protected, but they are not attacking. They are in hold fire mode. And now that they are attacking, dealing a fair amount of damage, but... Thing is, Halberds really don't take a lot of damage when they are just moving around. They deal a lot of damage when they're attacking, though. The Reaper, able to get rid of them, and the Scorchers able to get rid of the rest, and that's a lot of Scorch- Holy, 21 Scorchers! The Sponge has really been focusing on Scorcher production. This is actually working out for him pretty well, because partly he was able to raid very effectively at time getting rid of the Caretaker. At this point, Cubay doesn't have a whole lot of production going into his Hovercraft platform. He is getting some Maces, and those will be very effective. But under it's it's going to be kind of tough. I mean, at this point, the maces are going to be able to deal with the scrubbers without sorry, the scorchers without too much issue, taking very little damage in the process. The only reason that one mace died was because it was very close to where the scorchers were when it was finished building. The scorchers were at the factory. But even then, you see the maces are doing a great job getting rid of the scorcher army, they, as they should. They are the riot unit of the hovercraft factory. And they are doing their job well. Admittedly, there are a lot of scorchers, but even then... Scorcher Graveyard now. That was 21 Scorchers. Now it's 14, well, 14 including what's coming out of the factories. And now it's more like 5. Yep. That did not work especially well. However, at the same time, the Sponge does have a lot of reclaim to work with. He does have Reaper as well coming from the north. And he has enough Scorchers that at least away from the Maces, he's got a pretty decent time of it. Cubase Commander is upgrading once again, but at this point is going to be going down before it, or might go down before it upgrades. Hard to say. No, it will not, but it's very low health. And far more Scorchers are coming in to try to finish it off, also closing up the power plants. And at this point, the Sponge has double the economy of Cubay. A lot of that is going to be reclaimed, but even then, a lot of economy being built up. And there goes Cubay's Commander, getting rid of those Scorchers, but also getting rid of one of Cubay's biggest assets, which is the Commander upgrade that he does near the end. And I think the Sponge has this game. 
Not sure what could really done at this point. Really turned it around against those scrubbers at the start. I mean, that, that start was really bad, losing a lot of Scorchers like that. But it looks like at this point he has turned it around, gotten his harassment to pay off, and just needs to get rid of these maces and get rid of the main base. Maces are all that Cubay has built up so far. Might change it up when he when he needs to, but 20 metal right now. Those maces are going to be coming in once every like, once every 20 seconds or so to be a new mace. On the other hand, 130 metal with actually at this point not a whole lot of production, but there's so many scores at this point, and the gunship coming up as well. Not sure what he's going to plan on building with this, but. Basically, the sponge has 45 metal to pour into anything he wants. 15 of it going into the tanks, 30 of it going into everything else, and it looks like that, of course, is going to mean about 4 second scorchers. The mace is in here, and I should point out the mace does not have splash damage. It has a very powerful beam attack, but it doesn't have splash damage, so it can't easily deal with crowds if the crowds are not going to be killed one at a time quickly. And the Reaper, of course, not getting killed very quickly at all, but unable to hit too effectively, unless the mace goes close enough as it is, which is going to finish it up. And the Reaper I, has been cost effective. It has just been cost effective, so that was not a total waste. The more effective thing to worry about, though, it, actually, is this... This is not that's being built up. The gunship plant is not being used. All that's being used is the light vehicle factory. So apparently an air switch is planned and a possibility, but that's definitely going to be something that is something later in the game, if any time. And now the sponge is going for harassment about the southeast side of the map. It looks like the sponge is just about to go in for the kill. These maces are in position to try to deal with this. And th a lot of these scorchers will die in the process, especially since the maces are kiting them. But it looks like the scorchers are just avoiding the maces entirely as best they can. Some of them got caught up in the wreckage of their former comrades, but the rest of them able to get away, and unfortunately not the most effectively. Getting away right into the maces once again losing another half dozen or so. One of the maces goes down in the process, and more Scorches are going down. It's really not an even fight to try to fight this. However, the Scorches are going to take the much more effective fight, going to the north at the same time. A Banisher coming up from the north, Heavy Tank Factory, and the Scrubbers, sorry, Scorches are doing a great job dealing with all of the Quills, dealing with the Solar Plants, and otherwise continuing to eliminate Cubase economy, getting rid of his power of economy very effectively, and at this point, these are now once every 40 seconds. There isn't enough energy to support... Uh, well, soon, once the energy reserves are out. There isn't enough energy to support anything more than that. These maces, once they're gone, it's not going to be too hard to get everything else out. And brawlers! There we go, that's what he's building. A few brawlers coming in to finish off these maces. Those players didn't go for Black Dawn or something like that. That's more typically what players would go for, but... Brawler is going to be interesting. It's definitely tough enough to deal with the maces, that's for sure. Whether it's accurate enough to deal with them in a quick period of time, well, it doesn't matter. If there's enough of them, it really doesn't make a difference. These maces are going down. Not quite able to get in range in time to get rid of the brawlers. Brawlers clearly outrange the maces by a very wide margin, and Cubay has thrown in the towel. That is one to one. The Sponge winning game two, so Cubay and the Sponge going on to game three. We'll have that for you shortly, so stay tuned until then. Welcome back, Zero K fans. This is Game Three of Cubay vs. the Sponge. I am Shadow Three Three Three, your commentator, and we are on Avalanche this time. So Cubay and the Sponge, very two very tense matches have gone on so far, and right now it's down to the wire. Whoever wins this wins their match and goes off to face Lori, and whoever loses is just gonna have to spectate or play other one v ones off to the side. Though Cubay did a really good job with the first game in Small Divide, pushing forward with his cloaky bots, and the Sponge, the second game, looked like he wasn't going to have it, but then he managed to pull together with a lot of Scorchers. A, like, dozens upon dozens of Scorchers, and win that way. We're on Avalanche this time. Smaller map, and see what works out. The Sponge starting out in the southeast corner of the map. He is once again going very quickly for metal extractors, as he did in the first game. And light vehicles coming from Cubay. This map actually supports a lot of things pretty well. Light vehicles are good for dealing with the top side, and Cloakies can do pretty well dealing with the bottom section, and also a lot of trees for reclaim, but mostly in the center, so you have to push out a bit. You can't be too cautious about this, but it still works out pretty well. Anyway, Light Vehicle Factory, building up slashes for Cubay, and for 
The Sponge, of course, we are seeing Scorchers, because he loves those units. They worked out for him last game quite well, but Slashers, it's really a question of numbers. The, or never mind, not Slashers, apparently Slasher and then Scorchers. Slasher is kind of useful as a replacement for the Defender, since it's a mobile Defender, effectively. But at the same time, it's also a bit more expensive. It's about twice the cost of a Defender. Whereas Cubay, on the other hand, is mostly focused on reclaim. Actually, I'm a little surprised he's not building more metal. He's got nothing here right now. He's got the... Well, basically, he has no mexes. And it looks like that's going to be a bit of a disadvantage. The sponge is ahead in economy, getting rid of that slasher before any real damage is dealt, but the Scorchers are coming in soon after, following up, and will be actually able to deal quite a bit of damage. A matter of micromanagement at this point, but unfortunately the Sponge not retreating as well as he could be. Fortunately for him, that Scorcher did not quite die. Unfortunately for him, however, is at the front and it is taking a lot of damage and ultimately losing one Scorcher for the price of two. I mean, killing one Scorcher for the price of two, I should say. And the Sponge, his commander not upgraded and his mexes are going down. Cubay clearly very focused on a harassment-based opener while getting metal extractions of his own. Getting rid of this Mason as well. I'm actually, why is the Sponge... Oh, the Sponge had Reclaim, that's why. I don't know why the Sponge had a Mason pushing the factory, but it has Reclaim, and that is why. And it looks like Cubay is going to be very quickly taking this game. I think the Sponge has just lost the game within two minutes. There goes the Light Vehicle Factory. The Sponge really has nothing to work with, and Cubay has everything to work with. He can just build whatever he wants, getting a few more Scorchers just to seal the deal. But I think... It would have... I think this is game. I think... Yep, this is game. The Sponge has thrown in the towel. Very quick game. It was like two and a half minutes long. That was shortest game as far as I know of the tournament so far. The games that I've casted, that was the shortest game. So, that being said, that is going to be the... Uh, that's going to be the game. The results haven't been updated yet, but once they are, we'll have that. And, so yeah, Cube will be fighting Lori. And the Sponge lost that. That was a bit... That must be annoying. So right now, as far as I know, Drone and Banana are the next to be playing, but I think they're probably playing right now. Let's double check. Oh, Nork and Klon actually are continuing on their... Or Nork and Klon? What? Actually, Nork and Norm. Anyway, just double check. I want to see what is going on right now. Yes, Norm and Nork are finishing up their games. Must be some really long games. Well... Let's see what else is going on here. It looks like... Where's Drone? Ah, Drone has... Hmm, what's this going on here? So those Drone and Banana were the other... Or another quarterfinal match, which I'm not sure if it started at. I'll just double check. Started or if it's finished. Looks like the next one will be Drone versus Banana. So we'll have that shortly, and if not, I'll have something else. So stay tuned.